COVID. And so uh, one of the things with COVID was also that individualistic idea of how society works, like the individualistic mindset. And it's about how if if you want to wear a mask, you can, but if you don't, you don't have to. Even though a pandemic, a virus that is contagious is inherently collective, there's no way to go around it. So mm -hmm. uh, one of the things with individualism, uh, which is that individ individual segments that we keep talking about, um, one the first thing that it does it it separates us because it makes us believe oh we're only responsible for ourselves and that applies to every single person around us we are only supposed to care for ourselves and whatever we do won't impact others we are each responsible for our own lives um so there's that so it, it makes us detach from each other uh and secondly when we believe that our actions are the only it only aff affects us not the broader community then it becomes more difficult to redirect your outrage at these powerful people and structures above you that are actually um affecting you so that's one of the things that i was thinking about like what if we continue to think about these social issues in an individualistic way, it'll actually make it more difficult to hold those structures accountable and to um, speak to power when it comes to these uh, social issues. Mm -hmm. What I hear you doing right there, Marina, is talking about how neoliberalism hides power structures, right? That is, from my research, one of the mm -hmm. things that is consistent across, you know, time and space at this point um, is this function of neoliberalism to obscure, right? To hide, to mm -hmm. mask what's going on behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And just to define neoliberalism really quickly for those who don't know, it comes from this classic economic liberalism, the idea of a free market and individual power in the market. And it has now shifted into this new neoliberalism is the idea of deregulation, freedom, individualism. And the idea that we all have power in the system, but the thing about neoliberalism is it's actually illiberal. It's not, it doesn't actually help those in need. It kind of just gives you the idea that it does. And so like, COVID was the perfect opportunity for people on all sides of the political spectrum to come together and be like, we are all equally affected or somewhat equally affected by this contagious virus. And this is where the split of the left and the right really showed where instead of us coming together and be like, we need to find ways to solve this issue, we ended up looking to the power structures of random Republicans saying don't get vaccinated. And then there was this huge split of now we're making fun of people who died of COVID. It's like, it showed like this <laughs> ultimate break in the system of when we were supposed to come together because we were all suffering, we ended up splitting further and further apart. And so that's how like this, when we don't redirect our outrage it shows the split when we're supposed to be really like humanistic we care about people we're all humans we're supposed to care about each other and what it does is it creates we're just enemies at this point and we're just making fun of deaths and making fun of people for protecting themselves and it's it that's not how we should be going about issues social issues um and in that frame we can get into the idea of like intersectionality and the matrix of domination and we um kind of define we in, we defined intersectionality in the matrix of domination last week and we wanted to discuss how like intersectionality is not this like pop sociology definition that you hear a lot of people talk about like on twitter or out in out in the world where it's like oh we all have different like individual ideas and we think different things and like that's okay like that's not really what intersectionality is um, and how I like to define it, or this idea that I use was created by Crenshaw and it's the idea of the basement. And so the basement is kind of a metaphor to define intersectionality in a way that takes it away from the individual's point of view and takes it to a wider structural view of intersectionality. So in your head, imagine a basement with an opening on top. And in the basement, there are stacks of people on each other's shoulders going up to the top of this basement. And so in this metaphor, the people at the top are the most privileged. So like 
straight, white, rich men are at the top. And at the very bottom are the um, people who have multiple oppressed identities. So like black women, black trans women, um, people lower on the social class, like those are the people at the very bottom. And so the people at the top for the most privileged are able to just kind of climb out of the hole. And then they can kind of like kind of pick up the people right below them. But no matter what, no one will be able to reach the multiply marginalized people. They'll always be stuck at the bottom. And so what this does is it means when we are creating social movements and we're creating regulations or laws or movements that are supposed to help people, what the idea is you have to create it to help the most marginalized people. So you're gonna be helping people at the very bottom. And that means if the people at the bottom of the basement can get out, the people at the top can too. So in that case, if you don't think about it that way, the people at the bottom will always stay there. So we have to memorize, remember as we're moving forward, intersectionality is the idea of like this like multiply marginalized. And there are like ways as a structure but because we don't want to really always look at it at, as an individual, there's a structural way to help those who are multiply marginalized and at the bottom. And so that is how I kind of want to look at intersectionality and the matrix of domination, which is the overlap of these power structures. Yes. And then one of the things when it comes to intersectionality is, as Hallie was talking about with the pop sociology and mm -hmm. just really the mainstream it just becomes a bit diluted from its original intent and another thing that we also mentioned one term that we mentioned in the first episode was the matrix of domination and we're using those both together intersectionality and the matrix of domination and the matrix of domination is that system those overlapping systems of oppression that we've been referring to this whole time and mm -hmm understanding that overlap in that in that structure rather than identities necessarily as the cause of the oppression so for example with race race is not the cause of racism you are not race in in and of itself actually and this is a thing in critical race theory uh mm -hmm. we talk about what uh, is called racecraft and um that is a book by Barbara and Fields and Karen Fields that we'll link below. Mm -hmm. um, but the race, when it comes to this, race is, is a social construct. And what this means is it's not that it's not real. It's real and it's consequence is what we say. It's, it's constructed within the system that looks for justifications. Like it looks for a way to uh, justify their the oppression of certain groups of people so they create these uh these categories and so the categories themselves have no consistent biological root like this rate the concept of race has changed historically throughout history and it will continue to evolve um but the whole point is that understanding th these identities as a direct result from this social structure helps us move on from solely the individual with intersecting identities while that is an important part we do want to focus on that matrix of domination that is what is causing that oppression within according to your intersecting identities so it's a bit confusing it can get confusing but we hope to develop this a bit more throughout this series to really help us understand what that means